One mistake can kill your live stream. It sounds dramatic, but it's true. Whether you're streaming a big event or a simple webcam broadcast, a single oversight can pull the plug on your live stream without warning. Today, we're going to make sure that doesn't happen to you. Let's talk about the most common reasons that live streams fail and, crucially, how to prevent those failures. By the end of this, you'll know how to keep your stream solid no matter what. The number one stream killer is an unstable internet connection. Think about it. If your connection drops, your stream drops, period. Maybe you're on a shaky Wi-Fi network at a venue or relying on a single home internet line. I've seen it happen. Everything's working great. Then the network hiccups and your viewers are staring at a frozen screen. Internet issues are by far the most common reason that live streams go down. So how do you prevent a network disaster? First, whenever possible, use a wired internet connection for your live stream. An ethernet cable to a good router is way more stable than Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi might seem convenient, but it's prone to interference, password issues, or random dropouts, especially in crowded venues. But even with a wired connection, don't trust a single source. Always have a backup internet solution in place. Redundancy is the name of the game if you want to stay live no matter what. One professional approach to backup internet is called cellular bonding. In plain English, that means combining multiple internet connections, often multiple cell networks, into one super reliable connection. If one connection slows down or drops, the other keeps your stream alive. There are several ways that you can do this. For example, you can use a device like a Teradek video encoder or a LiveU unit, which are built for bonding and can use multiple USB modems or SIM cards at once. There's even a company literally called Disaster Group. Yes, Disaster Group that makes a dedicated bonding router for live streaming. And networking gear like Peplink routers are popular too. They let you load up multiple SIM cards and Wi-Fi or wired links, and they blend them together for rock-solid internet. If you're doing a professional event where the stream just cannot go down, these bonded solutions are a lifesaver. If you don't own this kind of hardware, there are services that you can rent. One example is pop-up Wi-Fi, which will actually send you a pre-configured unit packed with bonded cellular connections. Think of it as getting your own portable internet infrastructure for the event. You turn it on and it connects via multiple carriers to give you a reliable uplink. It's not cheap, but it's often worth it when the venue internet is questionable and the stream has to succeed. Let me give you a real world example of why all of this matters. I once live streamed an event at the United States Senate building in Washington, D.C. As you can imagine, getting access to a wired internet line there was impossible for us. Security and logistics meant that we were stuck with whatever network they provided, and that was it. In this case, that meant relying on the building's Wi-Fi and only the Wi-Fi. Now, streaming an important event over public Wi-Fi in a government building is just asking for trouble. We prepared for the worst, we brought in a pop-up Wi-Fi unit as our backup connection, just in case that Senate Wi-Fi didn't hold up. Sure enough, halfway through the event, the Wi-Fi in the building suddenly dropped out. Maybe too many people jumped on, or maybe the network had a hiccup. It doesn't really matter. It went down. If we hadn't planned ahead, our stream would have gone down right then and there, and everyone watching would have been left hanging. But guess what? The backup kicked in immediately. The pop-up Wi-Fi box seamlessly took over the stream using its bonded cellular connections. The viewers didn't see a spinning buffer wheel or an error message. The broadcast just kept right on going. Afterwards, the client was amazed that we never lost the feed because they knew the building Wi-Fi failed. That's the power of having a solid backup internet solution. It literally saved the stream. Now, internet connectivity is a big piece of the puzzle, but it's not the only thing that can fail. You should also consider backup options on the streaming platform itself. Platforms like YouTube actually let you set up a backup streaming server. In YouTube Live, for instance, you get a primary ingest URL and a backup ingest URL. If you can, take advantage of that. It means that you can stream to two endpoints at the same time, your mainstream and your backup stream. If the primary server has an issue or your encoder loses connection to it, the backup server can keep the stream alive for your viewers. 
In practice, using that backup server might mean running two separate encoders or two instances of your streaming software simultaneously, one feeding the primary and one feeding the backup. Pro-level productions do this all the time, often with two hardware encoders or two computers each on a different internet connection for maximum redundancy. It might be overkill for a small stream, but if you absolutely cannot afford a dropout, it's worth considering. At the very least, know that the feature exists. Even if you're a one-person show using OBS, there are plugins and services that let you push a stream to multiple destinations, including a backup on the same platform. The key takeaway? Cover yourself, both on the network side and the platform side when possible. Now, what if you're on a tight budget and all this talk of multiple SIM routers and fancy encoders is out of reach for you? You can still set up a basic safety net. Even a single cellular hotspot or a phone tethering data can serve as a backup connection. For example, you might have your computer plugged into Ethernet, but keep your phone ready to tether if that fails. Or use a small 4G or 5G router with one SIM card as a fallback. This kind of single SIM solution isn't as bulletproof as a true bonded system since it's just one connection. If that carrier has poor signal or congestion, you can still drop. But it's better than nothing. In fact, a lot of smaller streamers will use something like an unlimited data phone plan or a MiFi device as an emergency backup. Just remember this is a parachute, not a guarantee. It can save you in a pinch, but don't push it too far. Before we wrap up, it's worth mentioning a couple other common stream killers outside of internet issues. Power failure, it's a big one. If your gear loses power, that's just game over. Always use reliable power sources and consider a battery backup like a UPS for your internet router and critical equipment so a brief outage or someone tripping over a cable doesn't stop the show. Hardware or software crashes are another one. Your streaming software might freeze or a camera might overheat. This is why testing is vital. Do a test live stream beforehand and monitor your gear. Keep an eye on the CPU temperatures, make sure that your camera has adequate cooling or a fresh battery and so on. And of course, double check all your cables and settings. So many streams fail because a cable gets loose or someone forgot to hit the go live button on the platform. Those little details, they matter. The bottom line is that successful live streams come down to preparation and redundancy. If you eliminate single points of failure, whether that's your internet, power or encoder, you drastically reduce the chances of your stream ever going down. It might take a bit more effort and some investment in backup solutions, but it's worth it when you're live and everything runs smoothly. So plan ahead, use backups, test your setup, and you'll be able to hit that go live button with confidence every single time. If you found this video helpful and you want to level up your live production skills, consider subscribing to the channel. I post regular videos about live streaming, production gear, and technical workflows just like this. Join our community of creators and let's keep those streams running strong. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.